Today, we're painting tulips from a beautiful reference photo from Pixabay. Can you see the lighter circles in the background? That's called the bokeh effect, and it's easy to add with watercolor. First, draw or trace the outline onto your watercolor paper. You can download the outline page at debwatson.org. Start with the background. For a smooth background without brush strokes, mix more paint than you think you're going to need. A big puddle of pink or red. Wet the entire background except for the green leaves, the stems, and the parts of the tulip that are yellow. That's the center of the left tulip and the bottom of the right two tulips. Then paint the same area with your puddle of red. I usually start at one side and work my way across. My background is so sloppy wet, so I tilt the board to run off the excess paint. Your background should be a little darker than this, especially around the outer edges. To add interest to a flat background, before it dries, I'm dabbing off some of the paint with a paper towel in the middle of the tulips. Next, we'll paint the tulips. I'm gonna start with the darker red areas. So I mix a puddle of dark red or pink. If you can keep the reference photo printed out or on a big screen right in front of you while you paint, It'll be much easier to see where you want the tulips lighter and darker. Having variation in the color of your flowers is what makes them look so good, but it can be difficult, especially with the color red. To get more variation, you can use more than one red. You can mix a lighter and a darker red,
And once the values are on, you can mix your darkest red with a tiny bit of black or dark green to push that red even darker. Now that the dark areas are covered, I'm coming back with a much lighter, more watery red for the rest of the petals. Be careful not to paint those three yellow areas.
When the tulips are done, it's time to paint the stems and the leaves. Once again, you want the green to have variety in color and value. I'm mixing my blue with green gold for a darker green and blue with yellow for a lighter green. I'm going to start with the stems because I'm painting them all one color. On the leaves, I paint one leaf at a time, trying for the color and value I see in the photograph. You can add darker areas to your leaves by adding a little perlin green or black to your dark green. Since I'm not drying these leaves as I go, some of these colors might run together. But that's usually a good look in a watercolor floral. Once you get the color on every leaf, stand back and evaluate the look. You'll probably want to add shadows to the side of the stems or make the side of the leaves a bit darker after the first wash is dry. Now that they're all painted, those three areas we saved in the flowers, you can paint yellow or yellow-orange. Dry them well, and then paint the stamens in the middle of the left flower with dark brown or black. That's your center of interest. Evaluating this painting, 
I really wish I had made my background darker, but I think it's dark enough to show you how to add the bokeh effect to any finished painting, even some of your older ones. I'm drawing a circle on this piece of plastic. Then I'm going to cut it out with my scissors and make a round stencil. I tape the cut edge back together. Hold or tape the stencil down on your watercolor paper so it doesn't slip. Take a damp piece of Mr. Clean's Magic Eraser and wipe gently to lift off part or all of the inside of the circle. Don't lift your circles all in a row. Try for a random pattern. You can make stencils for different sizes of circles also. They're great to lift out a sun or moon in your landscapes. The bokeh effect adds just enough interest in your background to keep it from being dull. And it's not busy enough to detract from your flowers, so it's perfect. But I hope this gives you an idea of how to paint beautiful tulips with light to dark values in the petals and leaves and how to add a subtle bokeh effect. I hope your tulips turn out great. Happy painting!